Does the situation with regard to the speaker's chair being empty, does that potentially slow down any U.S. response here? Uh, unfortunately, there is a potential for that. Uh, you know, uh, Patrick McHenry, who currently serves as uh, Speaker Pro Tem, uh, it's not clear whether or not he is uh, allowed to be involved in these intelligence briefings uh, that are critical uh, to determining uh, what necessary steps may need to be taken by the U.S. government moving forward. Uh, and obviously, any additional uh, aid uh, to Israel would need to be approved by Congress. So it's critically important, obviously, uh, that we get a speaker in place. Uh, this never should have happened. Uh, you know, this is an example of why you don't move uh, to remove a speaker in the middle of a term uh, without cause uh, and, and uh, the chaos that ensues. And anytime there is uh, chaos or uh, you know, questions about uh, stability in the U.S. government, it has tremendous impact around the world. And so uh, this is something that needs to be adjudicated very, very quickly uh, when we get back to Washington on Monday. So what would you like uh, to see um, the, the U.S. posture be? I mean, the, the United States obviously has always supported Israel. Uh, are you satisfied with uh, the words that the president had to speak earlier today? Look, I've had uh, serious concerns about this administration's posture uh, with Israel, uh, both in terms of how they have uh, handled uh, enforcement of the Taylor Force Act, which uh, prevented uh, funds going to the, the PLA uh, and the Palestinian uh, government uh, because of the pay to slay uh, uh, program that they had in place. In addition, I think they have failed uh, to really uh, expand upon the Abraham Accords. Uh, I believe very strongly getting Saudi Arabia to the table is critically important. Uh, recent reports about what the administration was doing with respect to an Israeli uh, Saudi Arabia normalization agreement focused on uh, Israel acquiescing to the Palestinian Authority uh, in many respects. And I think what you see here, obviously, with Hamas, uh, which is uh, funded and backed by uh, Iran, the largest state sponsor of terror uh, in the world, uh, very, very troubling. And that's why just last week I raised serious concerns uh, when we had a, a hearing on the Taylor Force Act about uh, the administration's uh, plan to give $6 billion in funds, uh, sanctioned Iranian funds, uh, back to the Iranian government. Uh, they are, are, it's very clear uh, that they want to uh, wipe Israel off the face of the earth. Uh, they have said it repeatedly, uh, and I think any time we are giving sanctioned money back to Iran, uh, number one, it defeats the purpose of the sanctions, and number two, it frees up uh, Iran to, to shift funds to Hamas. Money is fungible, and so by giving them more funds uh, to help with quote-unquote humanitarian efforts, uh, when they've shown no willingness uh, to to uh, be uh, a, a uh, you know good actor on the world stage, uh, I, I think obviously is very troubling. So there is a lot of concerns I have right now. I think uh, the administration needs to work with Congress to make sure that Israel has all the resources that it needs. Uh, the Yom Kippur War 50 years ago, a Nixon moved to get uh, Israel. Uh, all of the weaponry it needed uh, to defend itself, I think we need to take that action and need to take it immediately. Uh, I, I got to ask you very quickly, the White House says that those $6 billion have not actually made it to Iran yet. Your response? That, that may be, but when you are uh, releasing sanctioned money, number one, it defeats the purpose of the sanction. Number two, it allows the Iranian government to use other other funds uh, and shift them. Money is fungible, and, and this is the challenge. And I, and I opposed uh, giving $6 billion to Iran for a reason. They are the biggest state sponsor of terror. So the administration can say right now, oh, that money hasn't yet received. But the, the mere action of allowing uh, those funds uh, to be moved uh, through Qatar uh, to Iran uh, is a problem.
And, it, and the administration never should have done that. New York Republican Congressman Mike Lawler, a member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. We appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you.